A mill face block is programmed identical to a mill frame, with the exception of milling type. But one thing I'd like to talk about that I see people do in the field all the time, and I think it is, it's, it's harming them more than helping them. They'll touch off their tools to the top of, the, of their raw stock, and then they'll program a mill face block with a negative 25 thousandths, for example, in the Z bottom. That works. Effectively, you're going to drop down 25 thousandths, you're going to remove all the material, and you're going to leave a nice, nicely machined flat surface for the top of the part. However, that is not Z0. That is negative 0 0.025. So from that point forward in the program, anything I do to the top surface, all my depths I have to add 0.025. No longer can I just program print dimensions. What I recommend is when you touch off to the top of your raw stock, either by putting your tools, touching all your tools to the top of the part, or by setting your part Z, 0Z to the top of the part, that you accommodate for that 25 thousandths and drop the zero actually below the surface of the part. That way, if you're removing an eighth of an inch of material, for example, your Z start could be 0.125 above zero, and your Z bottom then would be zero. When the facing mill gets done running, you will have established a nice flat surface on the part that is the zero plane. Everything below that would be a negative number, and could be actual print dimensions. Now let's look at the block itself. In the left picture you see an example of programming exactly as I've described. We had an eighth of an inch above the part where we wrap it to, we feed down to a Z of zero, and then we execute the mill face. That way again when we get done that top machine surface will be the zero point on the part. If we do this, we probably want to accommodate for or allow for that eighth of an inch of stock in our stock geometry, so our graphics will look correct. If we don't, everything will run just fine. The only difference is the control will see that you have milled down to a Z of zero. Because of your stock geometry, it will assume that the top of the stock is zero, and it will see nothing to graph, therefore there will nothing will be shown on your graphics for the face mill. The way to combat this is let's add that eighth of an inch to our actual material. So instead of a one inch, one inch block, we would put one and an eighth. Then we have to lift the part up using the reference positions. We haven't talked about the reference positions, but if we would to right, lift the part up positive an eighth of an inch above zero, that's going to show the control that material above the zero surface of an eighth of an inch it will now see something that it can remove. Now let's talk about using the reference position to rise that. The top of the stock is not zero, have we determined. We touched off, we dropped zero down below the top of the part. So for graphics, we want to accommodate for that. When you put a value in the XYZ reference position, in this case a positive .125, the part will rise up for graphics. That's what the machine will see. And if I lift it up an eighth of an inch, then that green field that you see on the screen will be an eighth of an inch thick. Part zero will now be below the surface by an eighth of an inch. And when we hit the graphics button and the face mill comes through, it will remove that eighth of an inch material and you'll be able to see that on your graphics. Again, this does not affect the way the machine runs. And if you did not allow for this, it would run just fine but we want to show graphics to be as accurate as possible, so we want to allow for that eighth inch if we can. Now here we see an example of the mill face. The X corner, X Y corner, and the X and Y length are identical to the frame block. The Z start and Z bottom also identical to the mill circle and mill frame. Going forward, Z start and Z bottom will work identical on all frames in the program. The only real difference on a mill face than on a mill frame is the milling type. Here you see the, uh, the soft keys along the side of the screen there. We have X unidirectional, by X bidirectional, and then Y unidirectional and bidirectional. The four images there show the differences. Unidirectional, whether, whether it be in the X or the Y, is going to travel in one direction, pick up, wrap it back to the same side of the part to begin again, drop down and make another pass. Bidirectional will zigzag back and forth across the part until it's finished. It will never lift up 
until the block is completed. So let's program intro 4 with the addition of a 3 inch face mill. Let's allow for the material in the uh, stock geometry. The final dimension of this particular part is 1 inch, so let's add something to that, making our rough stock a little bit larger than 1 inch thick. And let's use the Z reference field to lift the part up for graphics. You might even try running graphics before you put the Z reference position in and after so you can see the difference and exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish. The other difference being that this is a mill frame, it's a, a pocket, not a boss as we saw on the last print. So let's program intro 4. Again, the bulleted points on the side of the screen explain how to create the new programs and what speeds and feeds should be used for the tool. And as always, we have an example video of programming this part along with the stock geometry setup in, uh, as a separate video.